All right, let's do product time. <clears throat> new, new, new. New products. New, new, new. new products. All right, new, first new. up. Last new product of the year. Yeah, last new product segment of the year. Uh, Python for kids. You picked up this book. Yeah, I thought this was a great book. Uh, looked at it, saw the sample chapters. We have a bunch. Python for kids. Um, it's actually even for adults. If you want to learn Python, this is a fantastic. Like, don't worry, no one will judge. Uh, Python for Kids, excellent book. Uh, we like it a lot. Uh, really good illustrations. Full color uh -huh. book, like 333 pages. It's awesome. Wow, that's a big book. Next up, um, <coughs> once again, Bunny has made something none of us quite get. It's amazing and awesome. And uh, <coughs> it's. Uh, <coughs> Pardon me. It's this robot controller. Yes, this is like an embedded Linux slash robot controller. So he designed this for an educational group. Yeah. And um, he was thinking of maybe selling the boards individually. So um, he doesn't know how many he's going to make quite yet. So if you're interested in having an embedded Linux with Wi-Fi, robot controller has a bunch of H bridges, I believe, yeah, and sensor inputs. Different. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of fine detail, but like here's um, the Wi-Fi yeah. here. Uh, when he comes out with these Linux boards that are absolutely amazing, and um, the any TV that he did, um, it's just so beyond. Yeah, uh, there's a speaker, there's a battery um, plugs that can handle like big batteries. Um, there's a lot of breakouts. I believe this is for an LCD. Um, there's a Spartan FPGA here. It's a, it uses the Marvell. Hold on, let me tell you which chip. I don't know exactly which chip. Um, it has an SD card. It has an on-off switch, which is kind of nice. Um, so you can, I guess, turn on and off safely. <clears throat> uh, reset button, and I believe, uh, where are the H bridges? Oh yeah, so there's, there's two sets of uh, dual H bridges. I believe it'll control some servos. Um, so yeah, it is a robot party slash Linux machine. <laughs> so check out the specs. If this is something you're interested, sign up so we'll know how many uh, to order from him. Yeah, only sign up if you're going to order one because that's how we're gauging demand. We have a few of these and then we're going to put them on sale shortly. USB ports. Yeah, that's everything. I was saying before HDMI the show, if, um, if aliens crash and land and we need to figure out how their technology works, um, they're going to send in Bunny. Yeah. They just will. And it's open source hardware, of course. Okay, next up. You ready? Yep. We've got this awesome soldering stand. And... Um, of course, as someone commented in the chat already, they said, John Janeer, look at these amazing photos. Have you seen photos of soldering stations like this? It's actually kind of better than the photos of, like, showing on the overhead, so... Um, yeah, we should just look at these photos. We look at these photos. So basically, yeah. it's a really, really nice soldering iron stand, which I, which I like, because we have a basic one, which is, like, a couple bucks, but... Even if you have like a hacko station, you might want to upgrade to um, having the soldering iron holder be one of these guys instead of the standard one because yeah. um, it holds the soldering iron very solidly. It's it's super heavy, so it's it's like it weighs like a pound and a half. It's not going to tip over. It has a sponge, and it has um, the solder roll. Um, no, I don't want to show on the overhead. You don't want to show on the overhead. Nope, I wanted to show the photo. Um, it holds a roll of solder so that, you know, and it has a little, like, guide that you can feed it through so you can pull solder and it won't, like, bind up and stuff. And there's a little handle you can pick it up as well. So, yeah, yeah. it's kind of nice. It's super cool. So, here it is. Look these beautiful photos. Okay, next up, um, we only got two more, and then we're going to try to do some Yeah, it was things. a short day because, you know, everyone's on vacation. Yeah. Uh, these are really neat. These are super handy. So, if you have SMD chips, you can turn them into breadboard friendly chips yeah that's so exactly what's going look on. at all these great photos too like this so we just put these in they come in a pack of three yeah i put in three because i want to make it worth it to you know like you yeah. usually need more than one anyway and what type of chips can you put on these lady ada um well this this one is for uh well that's not focused right this one is for a tqfp 44 or uh, a qfn 44 so it's 44 pin chip and uh, this one is for um, sort of the larger 10 millimeter, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter uh, chips. Wait, hold on, let me try to pick this up. So the chip can fit right over it. You can solder it in, and then you can put header in. And this one is a 0.7 inch spacing. And on that back is a QFN, a little tougher to solder, but uh, we put a thermal pad in the middle or a self-centering pad. Each pin is labeled with a number. It's kind of hard to see here, but it, you can see very clearly in the photos. And then we also have um, a and, version. And, and before, these used to be super expensive out yeah, there. Yeah, often they're really 
really expensive, and so I don't know exactly be, why. I mean, be, like, because you, be, I, I know why. Because there was no other choice. Well, the PCBs only cost like a dollar each, so there's no reason it should be. Yeah, like, but it no, should, should be like six dollars per. No, they had a, a hostage market, and because people needed these, and there was like no one running boards or like servicing the market, um, they just over they overcharged. So we made we think better. If you get one from DigiKey, they're like they're like twenty dollars somehow. Yeah. Anyways, so th this one is thirty two pin. Um, and I, I work a lot with like little like Atmels and stuff, and so this is kind of a standard size for uh, Atmel chips and stuff. So this is the 32 pin. So it fits diagonally, and this one is 0.6 inches, so it actually will fit into a socket. Also, if you if you want to uh, yeah. use it in a socket, although it's a 40, it's so a 32 pin socket. Lots of folks out there get um, sample chips, and they just don't have anything to put them on. They can yeah. they can now do that. Yeah. So this is also QFN on the back, 32 pin QFN. And then 32 pin QFP on the front. And then, yeah, every pin is labeled still and it's nice and it's solid and it's easy to use. And then we have, um, we have like 20 more breakout designs that I have to send out, but we're starting with these two. I'll show them side by side. Okay. So uh, we have more coming and someone had a request to extend the pads. Well, you can extend the pads, but after a certain while, it becomes easier to bridge them. So there is, yeah. the, you know, they, they are, they're extended somewhat, but not, you know, we, we try to make it reasonable so you can solder it with a fine pitch iron, but if the pads are too long, they, they are more likely to, um, to bridge and also mm -hmm. like it, they, you can't fit it on a board. You know, the, could you paste and bake these? Yeah, you could do that. You could do that. Okay. You, you can drag solder them. Great. Okay. And then uh, last product, last product of uh, 2012 here. You got a little uh, breakup board. What do you yeah, do this is a simple one. Um, so this is sort of the sister. Uh, I can actually just talk about it because this, this photo is much better than the overhead. Um, this is a sister to the other I squared C based um, uh, sensor, a DC current sensor. This one is an analog output one. So instead of a digital output, it's not I squared C or SPI or anything. It's actually it's actually an analog output. So it's a high side current sensor, and it can go up to 60 volts. And it's basically just a, you know, an op amp configuration with, with a current mirror and stuff. And then um, we have it rigged up so it goes through a 0.1 ohm resistor, which I thought was you know, pretty reasonable. And um, it's, uh, so you can do up to five amps on this fairly, uh, about like four, four and a half or something. You can, you can go up to five um, continuous probably without any problems. And then the output is a scaled voltage to the amperage, so it's one volt per amp. So if you're drawing an amp, the output will be like one volt above ground. So the nice thing is you can do high side sensing, but then the voltage is with respect to ground. This, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, well, why would that be useful? Um, but then the next time you're en you end up trying to do like a current sensing loop or like a, a feedback control system based on current, you'll realize um, how nice it is to be able to measure the current in the middle or the top, but have the voltage reference to ground that's actually usually really hard to do. Um, so this is an op amp that can handle up to 60 volts input and, you know, has a differential input and, and does the right mirroring stuff to, to get the output the way you want What's it. a good application? Where, where could you see this be used? Um, projects, for Well, instance. like one project is that I, I probably will end up using this is I have to make um, a constant current load. And to do that, you have to stabilize the current uh, through a transistor. And so you have to read the current and then adjust the transistor to match it. Because okay. as the transistor heats up, it changes you know, the beta and changes how much current it's drawing. So this, this would be really handy in a current loop. Or like, let's say you want to um, uh, drive an LED current mode. This would also be something that would allow you to measure that current you're driving through a powerful LED. Um, especially there's some power LEDs that I have that are like 20 uh, okay. volt LEDs because there's like six one watt LEDs in a row or whatever. Yeah. Um, so this would allow you to um, measure the current through this those. This is almost like, side. this is in test equipment zone. This is, yeah, this is, a, it's kind of specialized, but um, if you if you do analog stuff, especially if you do like power analog stuff, uh, this is a, a handy little guy to have. Yeah. Um, you know, you can stick it in your circuits and uh, you, you, know, you know, you can build this with a couple op amps, but like it's kind of all ready to go, yeah. which I like. Okay. And, uh, that That's is it. new products 2012. Zoom.